Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a numerical expression. We've done similar problems before. I'll try to link them down below. We have 50 to the power 100 divided by 100 to the power 50. And we're going to try to simplify this as much as possible. You can argue that what I find is the simplest form. And let's see what happens. So I'll try to present more than one method. Let's start with the first one and see what happens. So, for my first method, I notice that 100, the base, is 2 times 50. So I'm going to go ahead and split up the base at the bottom. In other words, the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and write 100 as 2 times 50, and then raise it to the power 50. All right? Now, we have a rule for exponents, especially for uh, positive uh, bases. When you have something like AB to the power n, you can write it as a to the n, b to the n, right? So now we can go ahead and apply that property, and this gives us 50 to the power 100 divided by 2 to the power 50 times 50 to the power 50. Awesome. Great. Now we have this property that helps us simplify this, but we're going to use other properties. Of course, when you divide powers, like a to the x divided by a to the y, you subtract the exponents, a to the power x minus y, and that rule can be applied to these two numbers because they have the same base. Notice that? Okay. So, I'm planning to make a separate video on properties of exponents. I hope that is going to be helpful. Please let me know what you think. And if you have any other ideas about lecture videos, please also let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so 50 to the power 100 divided by 50 to the power 50 is going to be 50 to the power 100 minus 50, which is 50 to the power 50, because we're supposed to subtract these two exponents. And 2 to the power 50 is just going to stay in the denominator. Now, we did get another situation. This is what, it, what I like about these problems, that every time you apply a property, another property pops up, and you have to use it. So it's kind of like a nice way to practice these properties of exponents, especially if you're new to algebra. Now, what is that next property? We have the same exponents, different bases. They can be the same too, that doesn't matter. But we have something like a to the n, uh-oh, a to the n divided by b to the n, okay? So, what do you do in this case? You can basically write this as a over b to the power n. So use a common exponent. So that's what you can do here. And you can write this as 50 over 2 and then to the power 50. But 50 divided by 2 is equal to 25. That's fairly easy, right? So this would be 25 to the power 50. If you want to know what this number is numerically, you can go ahead and put it in Wolfram Alpha or in Desmos. But Wolfram Alpha is better at giving you more accurate answers. Because sometimes Desmos will tell you the number is undefined if it's way too large. I don't know if it's going to tell you that for this number, but anyways, you can go ahead and test it out. So this is the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at another way to solve this problem. So we have 50 to the power 100 divided by 100 to the power 50. Now, another method. So notice that with the first method, we broke down the base. How about breaking down the exponent in the numerator? Because 50 to the power 100 can be written as 50 to the power 50 squared. Again, using another property of exponents, which tells us that if you have a to the power x to the power y, it is a to the power xy. Or you can do vice versa. If you can factor the exponent, then you can definitely break it down like this. Because 50 times 2 equals 100, right? So now, what is the use of this, right? Well, notice that now I got the same exponent. That was my goal, either getting the same base or the same exponent. But I have a square. What am I going to do with that? Well, think about the definition of square. What does a squared mean? It's all about definitions, right? It means a times a. So I can kind of write this as 50 to the power 50 multiplied by itself, right? Divided by 100 to the 50. And now I'm going to go ahead and group these two together because they will have the same exponent. And 
we know this property already, right? We're just going to divide the basis, 50 divided by 100, and then raised to the same power 50, and that'll be multiplied by this one, which is 50 to the power 50. All right? And then everything will simplify. 50 divided by 100 is 1 half. Let's go ahead and simplify it. This is going to be 1 half, and 1 half to the power 50 times 50 to the power 50. Again, we have the same exponents, so we can kind of multiply the basis, right? So 1 half times 50, and then raise the product to the 50th power, and that's going to give us 25 to the 50th power, which is what we found before, right? We got the same answer with the first method. Of course, our answers should always agree, right? Now, here's a good question. Is there a third way to solve this problem? Let's go ahead and explore. So we have this expression, and we're trying to simplify this. I'm also going to show you a general way to approach these kinds of problems, which I believe is also very helpful. Okay, so we kind of talked about, you know, breaking down the base and then breaking down the exponents. Do you think is, there's another way to approach this problem? Let's think about it. Hmm. I could probably just do the following. We have a 50 and a 100, so we could kind of do the following. 50 to the power 100 can be written as follows. Oh, yes, I know a really cool third method, which is using prime factors. 50 can be written as 2 times 5 squared, and 100 is 2 squared, 5 squared, because it's 10 squared, right? So if you replace 50 with 2 times 5 squared and raise it to the power 100, and for 100, replace it with 2 squared, 5 squared, and raise it to the power 50, and then raise the powers to the powers. So again, we're using another property, a, b to the n. Remember that, a to the n, b to the n. This will be 2 to the 100, 5 to the 200, divided by 2 to the 100, times 5 to the 100. If you cancel out 2 to the power 100, by the way, those are very large numbers. Think about it. 2 to the power 10 is 1,024. 2 to the power 100 is going to be that number to the 10th power. So it's kind of like 1,000 to the 10th power. So it's roughly 10 to the power 30, which is very, very, very large. <laughs> Anyways, so now we ended up with this. And if you subtract the exponents, 200 minus 100 is 100. So the answer is 5 to the power 100. Wait a minute. Did we get something else? Yes, we did because we didn't really simplify it. 25 is 5 squared. And if you do that, you'll get the same answer. So you can write this as 5 squared to the power 50, which is the same as 25 to the power 50. So using prime factorization is just another method. And I just want to show you um, a general approach for these kinds of problems because that's where they come from. So you can basically write this problem as x to the power 2x divided by 2x to the power x, where x is equal to 50. So if you go ahead and think about it, x to the power 2x can be broken down in so many ways, but let's leave it at that for now. 2x to the x is 2 to the x, x to the x, and then it's totally up to you at this point how you want to break it down. You can kind of break it down like this. This is going to be x to the x divided by 2 to the x, and the answer is going to be x over 2 to the power x, which is 25 to the power 50. Or if you want to break it down like this, then it's just going to be a little different because now you're basically dividing x squared over 2 to the x, and then, of course, you have to divide it by this number, and then from here, you're going to get pretty much the same thing. Okay? Because the x's are going to cancel out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.